Hi boys and girls. I don't know if you remember me. My name is Caitlin. I was in your classroom a couple times. Um, I am Mrs. Gillette's daughter and I'm sure you have been spending a lot of time with your family. I've been spending a lot of time with my family. Uh, today we are going to read you a book and then we will do a little activity experiment with it. So that'll be fun. I hope you enjoy. We will be reading Bartholomew and the Oobleck. This is kind of a long book, so if you want, you should grab a snack. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did, as the year the king got angry with the sky, and they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If it had not been for Bartholomew, the king in the sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before, but that year when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year the old king did it. All year long he stared up into the air above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers. Hmm, the things that come down from my sky. All spring when the rain came down, he growled at that. All summer when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. All autumn when the fog came down, he growled at that. And that winter when the snow came down, he started shouting, this snow, this fog, this sunshine, this rain, bah, these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him. You've always had these same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of those old things. I want something new to come down. Something new to come down, Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible, your majesty. You just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me I can, can or cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land and you rule all the people, but even kings can't rule the sky. Can't, eh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I am the one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew. I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think of. And for many days, the old king stomped around trying to figure out some way to do it. Then finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal nightshirt, he suddenly stopped still. A strange wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. They can do it for me. Bartholomew, I'll blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh, no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew Cubbins. You do as I command you. Blow your, my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed, but your majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast on the king's back secret stairway, and a moment later he heard them coming, up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower, came the magicians on their padded, snuffled feet, up and down Right into the room they came chanting, Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff, Fiza, weeza, meza, cuff. We are men of groans and howls, Mystic men who eat boiled owls. Tell us what you wish, O king, Our magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, To have you make something fall from my skies That no other kingdom has seen before. What can you do? What will you make? For a moment they stood thinking, blinking, their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word, oobleck. Oobleck, asked the king, what will it look like? Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog, that's all we know. We just can't tell you anymore. We've never made oobleck before. They bowed, they started towards the door. We go now to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain, Negative. There, all night long, we'll work for you, and you will have Oobleck when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty. Stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow, I'm going to have Oobleck. 
It took Bartholomew a long time to get the excited king to sleep at night, but there was no sleep for Bartholomew, the page boy. All night long, he stood in the king's window, staring out at Mystic Mountain Negative. Somewhere up there, Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. All night the magicians did. All night they walked circles around their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not enough. Oh, we must make some brand new stuff. So feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion, burn a chair. Burn a whisker from your chin and burn a long sour lizard skin. Burn yellow twigs and burn yellow rust and burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green, thick, and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right. So quick, before the day gets light, go magic smoke, go high, go high, go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make Ublek tumble down on every street in every town. Go make the wondrous Ublek fall. Oh, bring down Ublek on us all. Dawn is just breaking and Bartholomew was still, standing, trembling, watching out the bedchamber window. But now as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then suddenly Bartholomew Cobbins stopped smiling. Was he seeing things? No, there was something strange up there in the sky. At first it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish steam. But now it was coming lower, closer down towards the field and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air right over his head. Queer little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about these blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Your oobleck is Falling. See the little green dots? The king sprang out of his royal bedsheets. My royal whiskers it is. Oh, that beautiful oobleck, and it's mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down as big as greenish peanuts. The bigger, the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stuff? asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe, sire? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bell tower. Wake my royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew didn't move. Run, barked the king. Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubbyhole and to the bell fry. Ring your bell, he called. His majesty, the king, proclaims today a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What is this holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still, nothing happened. Huh. What's wrong with my bell, he murmured. I better take a look outside. He poked his head through the little trap door. Merciful gracious, he gulped. What's that all over my bell like greenish molasses? Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at that poor robin down there in the tree. She's stuck to her nest. She can't move a wing. That oobleck's gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Oh, the bell ringer wrung his hands. If the green stuff sticks up robins, it'll stick up people too. Someone got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted. He turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. Uh-oh. To the trumpeter's tower raced Bartholomew and up the stairs, four stairs at a time. He ran as he could hear the plop plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big, 
greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter. He shoved his cold trumpet right into his sleepy hands. Get up, warn the people, blow the alarm. Alarm, yawned the trumpeter. Then his eyes saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew, where'd they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew. His royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leaped from the bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed the trumpet out of the window. I'll blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that could ever have been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was a glug. My horn, he gulped, one of those green things flew inside of it. He tried to blow it out, but he couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out, but he couldn't shake it out. I'll get it somehow, he yelled. I'll pull it out. No, shouted Bartholomew, don't touch it. The trumpeter's hand was already in it. His fingers grabbed hold of the lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in his fist like slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all of his might. The oobleck began to stretch, then gong. The oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked its arm back right with it up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know, and I hate to leave you stuck to your horn, but if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs raced Bartholomew Cubbins. Uh oh. Down to the chamber of the captain and the guards, the captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of the handsome mustache. Captain, do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? <laughs> Smiled the captain. What's wrong? Captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now. It's big as greenish baseball. Oh, that stuff, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that, lad? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, <laughs> pleaded Bartholomew, it's dangerous. Nonsense, snorted the captain. Lad, are you trying to frighten me? Captains, my boy, are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless. I'll show you. I'll eat some. Eat some, gasped Bartholomew. Oh, no. But before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out of his window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, Captain, don't! The captain did. By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside the room, his mouth was glued shut with oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captains of the guards could do was blow a lot of little sticky greenish bubbles. Forgive me for leaving you, Captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of bubbles is no help at all. Bartholomew stretched the poor man out. He left him there on his chamber floor. Bartholomew went tearing through the zigzag palace hallways. I'll get to the king's horse. I'll ride through the country. I'll warn the people of the kingdom myself. He pushed open the door that led out to the royal stables. Bartholomew stopped. He could go no further. The awful oobleck was plumping down as big greenish footballs now. Too late to warn the people of the kingdom. There were farmers in the fields getting stuck to the hoes and plows. Goats were getting stuck to ducks. Geese were getting stuck to cows. Outside the palace, it was piling up. Great greenish tons of oobleck deeper and deeper on every roof in the land. There was nothing Bartholomew Cubbins can do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. Uh-oh. Look at how big it's getting. So much oobleck. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad out. With an angry roar, the oobleck was suddenly hitting the palace harder. It was battering and splattering against the walls as big greenish buckets full of gooey asparagus goop. Like a stinky sailboat, the whole palace was springing leaks. The oobleck was ripping the windows right off their hinges. It was dripping through ceilings, it was rolling down the chimneys, it was coming in everywhere, even through the keyholes. From every bedroom in the palace came the howls of lords and ladies, frightened in their nightgowns. They came jumping to their doors. Go back to your beds, get under your blankets, Bartholomew Cubbins went crying through the halls, but nobody paid the slightest attention. Everybody in the palace started rushing madly about. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen. Bartholomew Cubbins saw him trapped there, stuck to three stew pots, a teacup, and a cat. The royal laundress launched outside to save her laundry. 
Bartholomew saw her stuck tight to the clothesline between the two woolen stockings and the king's best Sunday blouse. He saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to their royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. Uh-oh. They were stuck up by the dozens. Every last friend he had in the world was flopping and flundering, all hopelessly caught in the goo. Then suddenly, missed the hubbub, Bartholomew gasped, the king, where was the king? He had forgotten all about him. Uh-oh. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him. There he sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of dead, trembling, shaking, helpless as a baby. His royal crown was stuck to his royal head. The seat of his royal pants were stuck to his royal throne. Ublek was dripping from his royal eyebrows. It was oobing into the royal his royal ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew, he commanded. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the Ublek from falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave on mountain Nakatave is buried in Ublek. Then I must think of some magic words, groaned the king. Oh, what are those words my magicians say? Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff? That's all I could remember. They don't do any good. The Ublek keeps on falling harder. He's covered. Bartholomew Cubbins could not hold his tongue any longer, and it's going to keep on falling, he shouted, until your great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying foolish magic words. You ought to be saying some plain simple words. Simple words? What do you mean, boy? I mean, said Bartholomew, this is all your fault. Now, the least you could do is say the simple words, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked to the king like this before. What? He bellowed. Me? Me say I'm sorry? Kings never say I'm sorry. I am the mightiest king in all the world. Bartholomew looked the king square in the eye. You may be a mighty king, he said, but you're sitting in Ublek, up to your chin, and so is everyone else in your land. And if you don't even say you're sorry, you're no sort of king at all. Bartholomew Cubbins turned his back. He started for the throne room door. But then Bartholomew heard a great deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew Cubbins. You're right, it is all my fault, and I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, I am awfully, awfully sorry. And that moment, the king spoke those words. Something happened. <gasps> what do you think happened? Guess we'll find out. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, I'm sorry. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, it's all my fault. Maybe there was, and maybe there wasn't. But they say that as soon as the old king spoke them, the sun began to shine and the fight it, to fight its way through the storm. They say that the falling oobleck blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. They say that all the oobleck that was stuck to all the people and all the animals the kingdom of did just simply quietly melted away. And then they say Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve. And led him up the stairs of the bell tower. He put the bell rope in his majesty's royal hands and the king himself rang the holiday bell. Then the king proclaimed a brand new national holiday in honor of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knows now knows that these four old-fashioned things, the rain, the sun, the fog, the snow, were good enough for any king in all the world, especially for him, old King Derwin of Did. Hi, boys and girls. Wasn't that fun? That was nice of Kate to read us that story. When I think about it, I think, hmm, there were two little words. I'm sorry. But together, that can make a really big difference. Even though sometimes those are the hardest words to say, sometimes they can make everything all better. Would it be fun if we made some oobleck? Oh, look at Lila. She needs a haircut really, really badly. <laughs> I'm sorry that I can't get you there. So we're gonna make some oobleck with Kate. And what you're going to need is cornstarch, 
green food coloring and water. Get a bowl and meet me back at the table. All right, sweethearts, so we're ready to make our oobre. Kate has one going, so I'm gonna show you how we got started. We added two cups of cornstarch. You're gonna need an adult to help you measure because it's a little messy and one cup of water. When you start mixing this together, you're going to feel that it's cold and squishy, but it's also very, very hard, and you're gonna to have to work it through. Now, let me think about the book. Ublik was a special color. Do you remember what color it was? I don't, maybe you, your students can help us. Do you remember? You're right, it was <laughs> it green. It was green. So I have green food coloring, but I also have yellow and blue. So yellow and blue combined make green as well if you don't have green at home. This is something that you need your family to help with. That's why I'm helping my daughter. Once you put the food coloring in, you just gotta mix it some more, get your hands a little dirty, maybe a little green. We did notice that it sometimes we had to add a little extra cornstarch to make it um, the right consistency for us. So you'll add as much food coloring as you'd like as well. How is yours feeling now, Kate? Well, now that mine is complete, except for the color, which we'll get to that, um, if you poke it, it's kind of hard. It is very hard. Now, can you just put your finger on it and hold it there? What happens? It goes all the way through. It, it does. sinks in. It sinks. Oh, it's very gooey. It is very gooey. And if and you pick up a clump way. of it and hold it in your hand, it stays in a clump, but it also melts a little. I've never felt anything like this. This is a different angle of the oobleck so you guys can get a better view. So it's kind of hard if you just poke it really fast. You can kind of push it a little bit too. But if you just put your hand in lightly, you could sink. Isn't that silly? And if you grab big handfuls of it, you can make fists and balls. But if you don't do anything, it runs right through your fingers. It's kind of slimy, but kind of hard too. It's a very weird feeling. Now, what made you think of the book, Ublik? Well, I knew that being stuck in the house all day, watching it rain and snow and be sunny was a little silly. And I knew about this book and how the king wanted something different with the weather. So I thought maybe Ublek would be fun to do with the kids. It is, and I'll tell you what, it's a little messy. It is so a little be messy. <laughs> But I'm gonna grab a handful to see how it feels. It's hard to get in there. Yeah, it is. Oh. It comes up like a clump. Oh, it does. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's wet and it's dry and clumpy. The mm -hmm. fun thing about Ublek is it's kind of like a solid and a liquid. Hold this hand up so everyone can see it like running free. This is something kind of, this isn't something that you want to eat. This isn't something that you want to play by furniture. This is actually something fun to make in the kitchen and then play outside with it. <laughs> uh, does yours have to be green? No, you can make it any color that you want. Uh, it's something that you can have fun with. And I bet if you put it in a Ziploc bag, that would be a safe place to keep it or in a, um, like a Tupperware container. Mm -hmm. Those would be two fun places to keep it and keep it safe so it doesn't get on the carpet or anything in the house. Yeah. Keep it away from your pets. We don't want them eating anything. <laughs> so this was something fun. Um, we hope that you have fun with it and that you enjoyed the story. And we will see you next week. I will be reading The Giving Tree and we're gonna make a tree craft. Does that sound fun? So I look forward to seeing you all back real soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>